if you're not offering that flexibility to those candidates that are looking for it, then your talent pool diminishes significantly. Hello there. This is John Bernadovich, your host of the HR Like a Boss podcast. Thank you for listening. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. I've embarked on a journey to get to know amazingly awesome HR and business professionals, and I'm trying to understand what it takes to do HR like a boss. On today's show, I cannot tell you how happy I am to have Jamie Myers on the HR Like a Boss podcast. I met Jamie almost 11 years ago at a Panera in Montrose. I know on the last show we had Bob on, I met him at Summit Mall. And so surreal to have this series of uh, Willery employees joining me to share what they think it takes to do HR Like a Boss. So Jamie, welcome to the HR Like a Boss podcast. Hey, John, I am happy to be here. Great. And I'm, I'm so excited to have you be able to share your experiences over the years. I know over the last 11, so, 11 or so years, we've gotten to know each other quite a bit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a first on the HR Like a Boss podcast. And if, if, you're, if you're listening at home, Jamie and I have something in common. Here's one of them. This is Jersey. She's looking at me like, what the heck? Jersey's a Cavapoo. <laughs> She's waving into the camera right now. And we have, we have a love for pets that we've learned over 11 years that we have in common amongst other stuff like recruiting and helping people. But Jamie, for those that don't know you, say bye, Jersey. Those of you listening on, on the Hi, audio, she's, she's not sure what the heck's going on right now. But Jamie, tell, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, what you're into these days, and, and how you're doing. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So like John said, uh, we do love dogs. I am a dog mom of two. Um, I have a French bulldog, bulldog excuse me, named Bruiser and a pit named Vivian. Um, so those are my two fur kids. I have been with Willery for going on 11 years this year. Started fresh out of college with John. Um, one of the funny comments that I always tell people is when John and I first met via phone, I told him I did not want to work for a small company and I did not want to do sales. And I ended up working for a very small company and I ended up starting in sales. So here we are 11 years later and I am a full cycle recruiter for Willery. I've been in this capacity for, um, well, my whole time, but uh, right now, the last couple of years, I've been solely focused in that space and I love it. Um, down here in Columbus, Ohio, go Bucks! I am a Ohio State grad. Um, so yeah, just happy to be here and talk to you guys a little bit about HR and from uh, my recruiting perspective. Jamie, how would you describe the purpose of human resources? Yeah, so when I think about human resources, I think of formal uh, definition and I think of an informal definition. So from a, a formal perspective, um, I really think the purpose of HR is to really manage and develop the entire employee life cycle from hire to retire. So that's probably a pretty common response. Um, but informally, I really think that human resources is the voice of the employees. So being able to listen, prioritize and promote um, employee opinions and ideas um, I think is truly uh, their purpose. From a trend perspective, I know you specifically have seen the impact from a recruiting um, standpoint, you know, pre-COVID, in the midst of the first year of COVID and all that went with that. And now that we're two plus years past that, the, the impact of remote and hybrid and on-site requirements as recruiting gets harder and a lot of candidates want to be remote 100%. And I'm curious about your perspective of that, how clients can adapt accordingly to be able to attract top talent. Yeah, it's been it's been really different the last few years uh, since I started when everybody was just on site. There's no such thing as remote. And the fact that Willery is 100% remote was kind of an anomaly. Um, if you guys didn't know that, we're 100% virtual workforce here. So luckily we were not impacted by the pandemic. Um, but, you know, as I've continued to recruit over the last couple of years, some of the, the trends um, in work environments have definitely shifted. So, you know, companies are, are trying to manage their workforce through different environments, whether it's on site every day. Yes, there's actually still companies to this day that have people on site every day. Um, and then there's others that are offering more flexibility um, by changing to more of a hybrid remote on site or 100 percent remote work environment. So. Um, this is really impacting recruitment, as you can imagine, um, from a, duffel, a couple different angles. Uh, from a candidate perspective, most candidates that I talk to to this day are in the market um, for a hybrid at the very least, but mostly 100% remote work environment. So 
um, that adds a level of difficulty from a client company perspective. Um, if you're not offering that flexibility to those candidates that are looking for it, then your talent pool diminishes significantly. And I'm curious about the person that you have in your life that carries such a high degree of EQ and how it has positively impacted their effectiveness in their job and their relationships and everything they do. Shout out to my boss, Lady Lisa Mamula. Um, she's going to be my go-to here for this. Um, she's uh, obviously my boss. She's been working with Willary for a while now. John uh, knows her very well, um, is on the leadership board together with John. But she's always exhibited, you know, ideal characteristics of emotional intelligence. And just to name a few, she's an excellent listener, never interrupts, pauses before she responds. She's very patient and she's empathetic. Um, and something that I really value is that she thinks before she speaks, because that's not always easy. Um, I definitely have a difficult time with that. Um, but really, you know, her level of EQ allows her to be somebody that you can really count on, somebody you can go to if you need to vent, and somebody you can bounce ideas off of. Um, so yeah, she's kind of, she's luckily my boss, but also a really um, good go-to in, in just discussing whatever you want to discuss and, and, you know, not feeling like she's judging you by any means. Um, yeah, Lisa. I know that we've talked about this quite a bit. I know for a period of time, uh, I was your direct supervisor and uh, boss, boss man, as you once called me. <laughs> but I'm curious about your maturation and your number one suggestion when it comes to giving and receiving constructive feedback. Yeah, awesome. Definitely uh, near and dear to my heart. I've always told John that I really like receiving the constructive feedback. Um, it's not always easy to hear, um, but it definitely is helpful in, in development. So from a giving constructive feedback standpoint, um, one thing that I've learned over the years is that the constructive feedback has to be timely. Um, you know, employees should know in a timely manner what they're doing right and maybe what isn't working well. Um, because if you, you know, if you're not timely, problems will absolutely snowball and it will make a pretty awkward discussion. <laughs> if you're gonna be speaking about an issue that occurred six months prior. So um, I would say, you know, annual performance reviews are kind of on their way out and regular consistent feedback is definitely the way to go. Um, as far as receiving feedback, pretty easy. My number one tip is to clarify, clarify, clarify. So ask questions. Um, I could go on and on about other tips, but you said one, your number one tip. So it would be ask questions. All right. Well, the podcast is called HR Like a Boss. The pending book is called HR Like a Boss. And I get all guests out of the show on this very last question is how would you describe someone that does HR Like a Boss? Yeah, this is tough. There's a lot of different um, adjectives that you can use to describe a boss of HR. So my go-to is just somebody that actively listens to employees and empathizes with them. Um, that's truly what makes them an HR boss. Jamie, you did great. Hope you had fun. Thanks, John. I did. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you for checking out the HR Like a Boss podcast. If it resonates with you, please consider leaving a rating and review. And better yet, subscribe and share with a friend. Until next time, let's continue to aspire to do amazingly awesome HR.